arm because you're good at what you do. Just pulled up this morning in Kingsport, Tennessee, getting ready for getting ready for another well test. May 16th, 2023. Another day in office. You never really know what to expect, but one thing for sure, you can expect a well test. So, let's see what we got going on up in here. You never really know what type of personalities you're going to run into, what type of test booth atmosphere you're going to be in. But for the most part, hey, like I said, another day in office. Let's see what we got going on. So today we're back in the booth. It's going to be the, the normal test. The super coupon. Take the root, take the hot pass. Stick it out. And then we're going to have that two inch. We're going to have that two inch schedule 10. Schedule 10 stainless test. So another day in office. Hey, this is how we do it, right? 2023. May 17th. Let's go. So in this test booth, we already got issues. Um, QC not really prepared for us. This is what it gives me right here. To clean the inside of my pipe. And he don't have any more of these flat rolls right here. Yeah, so. But his expectations is, is very high. No grinding on this test. This is going to be the, the two inch. Look like schedule 40. Yeah, the two inch schedule 40 stainless. And uh, you can use a file, but no grinding. But the thing about it, again, they're not prepared for us. How are you not going to have any tools for the equipment <laughs> and only have a used clap away? So things like that you got to be aware of. But you got to go back to what you know and use what you got because at the end of the day, you still got a test, and it is what it is. Let me go ahead and get started. Whenever you're going to test boots, let's make sure you, you grind these nice and flat because sometimes if you have the hard, rough spots, raised spots, so whenever you put your, your coupons on it, you don't want it to be unlevel. You want it to sit nice. This QC right here, he's giving us two hours on each test. Two hours on the stainless, and he's gonna give us two hours on the uh, super coupon. Now, two hours on the monster coupon, that seemed a little, a little unfair, but we're gonna see how it go, right? It's always something. This QC, he's a real new guy, so you know how those new guys are. They come out of high school, come out of college, and uh, they're real gun ho They go on according to the book, some of them, not going according to the book. Some of them are pretty much 
fighting that testosterone and they're in charge and this is how it's gonna be and I'm gonna I'm gonna set the rules, all that weird bring them around. But it's nothing I used to. Gotta make adjustments. So I got my coupons in. I'm gonna stick my argon holes right at the, the back of this so I got a little bit of an opening here. And we're ready to start. Walk in a cup, 
it's just it's really it's really uh, easy on the palm. It's really easy on the grip. You can move around. It just gives you a sense of uh, you, you got a good grip on something. So keep that in mind. Whenever you're doing your TIG welding and you walk in that cup, I've had this ever since I started TIG welding because this traditional, I guess, plain Jane stick or plain Jane grip, as you hold it, over a period of time, it's like you're doing this right here, but your hand naturally want to do this, right? So, don't that make sense? It's more relaxing in the hand. So check that out and try that. So whenever you get a chance, wrap your TIG rig up. Remember, a natural grip is better than a closed fist, especially when you're on heavy wall. And when, you, when you're trying to put your root in, you're one of those guys that like to walk the cup opposed to holding the TIG rig way up here burning your fingers. This ball grip right here works miracles. Here goes the moment of truth. Welcome to the heartbreaker. Time, but nobody took it serious over the years. I never, I've actually never heard about nobody being run off or, or uh, fell in the well test because they didn't actually, they didn't actually clean their work area. But me, ever since I've been welded, I've been taught to clean up after yourself. So that's just what I do. But uh, yeah, 
QC showed me the paperwork and he says, uh, he only tell each welder, he tells each welder one time, this is your test and your final inspection is the cleaning of your boot. So I'm cleaning my boot. And uh, who the hell want to be walked out on, on, on those terms? He did a good test and um, <laughs> the QC, uh, the QC tapped you on the shoulder and say, uh, hey, sorry you didn't make it. You turn around and say, what? The bin test went really well. They say, well, you didn't clean your booth. Man, there'll be some furniture moving in here, right? But no, you gotta clean your booth. I'm not sure if it's just this state I'm in, and this is actually my first time working in Tennessee. If, I, if my memory served me right, this is my first time working in Tennessee. So hey, it's, it's always something new. As the years go out, as you stay in the field, you're always gonna learn something new. So, yeah, clean your boots. And not only that, it just shows the professionalism in yourself. 